the beginning of your journey, it's just, it's kind of a wide beam of light. And as you hone that clarity and you hone it and you hone it and you hone it, it gets very small, like the size of a, the top of a pin maybe, but it's powerful because it's super focused. I don't, I'm lost. The first step to overcoming drinking is admitting you have a drinking problem. The first step to getting clarity is admitting you don't have enough clarity. The only wrong answer is to not search. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode. It was last week's live Q&A. How do you tell other people that you've changed? Difficult but necessary. Today, for episode number 767, why clarity is a super power. Going to be fire. Very, very important. I hope. I hope. Or we just set the bar really high and we're going to just really disappoint each and every one of you listening today. Um, I was on the phone the other day with a client and we were talking. One of the questions, he always he always comes with great questions. One of the questions he asked was, what, what made the biggest difference in where you and Alan are today? Like if you could look back and say like, what made the biggest difference? I said, number one for me, Alan because being partnered with Alan has been amazing and I've just learned so much. And I, I know I wouldn't be here without Jeff number two, just wouldn't, I'd probably be more successful for sure, but <laughs> no, I wouldn't be. I know for a fact I wouldn't be. So I always want to preface, I got to preface that because if I don't preface that, then I'm not, I'm not adding as much value as I could. Second thing, going back to episode 765, I had clarity very, very early. I go back to, episode number seven, when it was the hyperconscious podcast and I was by myself, I had an episode called chase your effing dreams. And this was my, the time in my life where I didn't like my job. And I was really getting into my imagination about what was possible. And I said, my dream life, my goal is to wake up when I want, go to the gym when I want, spend time with my friends and my family when I want podcast with amazing people and just live a life on my own terms, be my own boss. Now, I think because of the, the only reason my life looks like it does today is because I had that level of clarity 760 episodes ago. It's the only reason why it's basically like, instead of thinking, okay, where am I trying to go? I just have to figure out what is the end destination. And when you figure out what the end destination is, you're already further along in this weird way. It's like, okay, we're going to climb a mountain. Cool. Which mountain? Oh, we're climbing this mountain. Okay. Then I can look online and say like, okay, this person climbed the mountain. This is the path up that mountain. Success is the same thing. If you want to be a successful podcaster, follow successful podcasters. If you want to be a successful speaker, coach, mom, family person, whatever, you just follow people who have done that already, but that requires you to have the destination in mind. So today we're going to talk about how you can get more clear and why clarity really is a superpower. Uh, I know that I keep mentioning book club, but Stephen Kotler, we interviewed him and in, in his book, The Art of Impossible, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It's, it's so good. And there's this one chapter where he talks about how if you read five hours of a really good book, this is assuming the author spent real time and real research and real like, you know, decades of their life mastering this craft. He, he broke down basically the return on investment of your time for articles, for blogs, and for books. And so he said for a book like The Art of Impossible, for five hours of your time reading my book, you're getting 15 years of my consciousness. Mm. That's an unbelievable ROI. So to Kevin's point, which mountain? Okay, that mountain? Okay, great. Who else has climbed that mountain? Did they write a book about how to climb that mountain? Because if they did, buy it. Right? And 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 I often, I tell a joke, and I say this often, um, and because I, I love it, I won't stop saying it. If Kevin and I were our coaches early on, we'd kick our own ass. The reason I say that is because it's kind of funny, but it's also true. The reason why, I remember Evan Carmichael, when he coached us, you know, he was... I don't want to say mean. He was just like, he couldn't he was believe. Hard. He was hard on us. I know now why he was hard on us. He, we were Jeffin. 
we yeah. were we were making a lot of mistakes. Like, and again, you have to make mistakes early in your journey. That's how you grow. No one wants to jump on a on a train that's not moving, on a train that's not headed towards a bright future. But what everyone needs to understand, if you're out there listening, is that there is someone out there who can help you. There are resources that you can turn to to try to get clarity. I think what I find, Kev, and and where I want to start this. I think a lot of people believe they have clarity, which is why they don't seek it. And I'm going to give some tangible examples. I remember um, in my last relationship, I would spend time with my ex-girlfriend and her friends. And to be just transparent, my ex-girlfriend and her friends didn't have clear goals and dreams from my perspective. From my perspective, they they were, you know, in careers and they had jobs, but they didn't necessarily have a ton of clarity on exactly who they are and exactly who they, what they want to do and what their purpose was, their calling was. And that's okay. I, there was a time in my life that I was like that too. And Kevin, same deal. Mm -hmm. But if I'm honest, I would notice and I would stumble upon some people who think they have a lot of clarity, but here's why they're around a lot of other people who also don't have clarity. So they think they have clarity. It's kind of like that person who's been in only two relationships and they both were really terrible. And then when they get in their third relationship, they think it's amazing when in reality, it's just like decent, but they have only ever experienced traumatic relationships. So they think it's great. And, and it's, it's based on not understanding the statistical analysis of the entire pool. If you're sample, if you have a sample size of two in statistics, you don't, you can't draw any conclusions based on that. You shouldn't anyways. That's like saying, I, I had a sample size of two people in the U.S. and they were both in mass and both of them were well-educated. So all of the U.S. must be well-educated. It's like that's that's a, that's not a, a, a good conclusion to draw based on such so little data. Mm. And so my point here is this. If you're out there right now and you don't have clarity in comparison to what Kevin and I are talking about, that's okay. Don't wait till you're 26 and are suicidal like Kevin or till you're 26 and you get in a nearly fatal car accident like me for you to finally just admit it. I don't, I'm lost. The first step to overcoming drinking is admitting you have a drinking problem. The first step to getting clarity is admitting you don't have enough clarity. The only wrong answer is to not search. And I, I wrote this down. Fear of uncertainty is stopping you from actually getting clarity, which by the way, Fear of uncertainty is causing more macro uncertainty. Let me give you an example. If you're out there listening, answer this difficult question. Um, I'm actually going to read you one of my questions that this same um, client of ours, who's looking for clarity, by the way, which is probably why this episode manifested. I said, what breaks your heart? What pisses you off? What injustice in the world would you solve if you could? Those were from Mike Kim's book. Uh, you are your brand. And then I kept going. What are you best at? What comes easy to you that doth, that doesn't come easy to everyone? What do you love doing most? What do you hate doing most? What problem do you solve most easily? What skill do you have that's way above average? What could you do every day for the rest of your life and be fulfilled by it? What's one thing? What's one thing that you've always felt pulled slash called to do when reflecting back on your life? What about you never changed? What has always been most fulfilling for you? What has always been least fulfilling for you? What do you regret? What don't you regret? What were you always glad you did even if you didn't want to do it at first? And I got more. What's your one word? What's your deepest pain? What's the source of your deepest pain? What do you love most about yourself? What do you dislike most about yourself? What's your biggest strength? What's your biggest weakness? Who do you admire most and why? How will you serve the world? What do they need that your gift can provide? Those questions, and I sent them to the entire NLU team, by the way. Can we, can we create a PDF? I would love to. Yeah, create a, absolutely. Maybe we can create a PDF and then link it in the, the show notes. 100%. And I sent those to the entire NLU team after I sent them to this person. Because this person asked me, like, how do I figure out my genius zone? And I went off on it. And I was like, you got to search. You got to contemplate. I didn't wake up and suddenly know who I was and what I want to do in the world. I spent my whole life searching. We're all lost. Some of us are just less lost than others. I'm less lost at 32 years old than I was at 30. My girlfriend at 26 is without a question less lost than I was at 26. It's a trajectory. It's an acceleration. And we can help you accelerate it. How do you accelerate it? You ask difficult questions. Now, my point that I wrote down, fear of uncertainty. When you do download this PDF, and I hope you do, 
and you ask these questions to yourself, guess what's going to happen? You're not going to get more clarity. You're going to get uncertainty. Yeah. You're going to be like, holy crap, I don't know who I am. I don't know the answers. That's okay. That's the best place to start. And if you can get through that, that lonely discomfort of contemplation alone by yourself, that's when you start to get clarity. And that's when things really start to get in gear. And the beautiful thing is a lot of, a lot of your clarity comes from your past. It comes from things that have already happened. So there actually is clarity there. The, the problem is usually you don't get an opportunity to look back until after you're clear. So I would challenge the listeners and the viewers to really sit down and think of some trends. Think of some, some things that have always kind of been there and go through Alan's questions too. But like, that's what the conversation I had the other day was, I used to listen to the radio. Shout out to Danielle Murr. We had her on episode 28, 20, 32, something 24. like that. 24. Way back in the day. I used to listen to the Hillman Morning Show. I did Because too. that's like a New England show, or it might even be like just a Massachusetts Boston. show. Boston, yeah. Boston. And I used to listen to them when I drove, when I used to drive a truck. I used to listen to them at the gas station when I worked at the gas station. I used to listen to them sometimes when I worked on my phone. Same. And... I used to say, imagine if you could just go and talk about stuff that you enjoy talking about for four hours a day, and that would be your job. <laughs> and now, we, for us, it's not even four hours a day in terms of us Podcasting, being on, on yeah. air. Right? Yeah, definitely, careful with that. It's definitely more than that. It's <laughs> yeah. definitely more than that. But that's a that's a retroactive realization for me. Now, in this moment, it's like, oh, interesting. Shout out to, to Cope Daddy. Uh, Cope Daddy gave me love last time I showed him out. Show, shouted him out. He reached out and said, "Hey, thanks for the shout out." But it was one of those things of Alan and Copeland interviewed me, and afterwards I was like, "Imagine if you could do that for a job." And Andrew said, "You can do that for a job." Boom. Okay, that landed for me. Like that in that moment landed for me. And this is the other thing too. Alan's giving you tactics. This is this is different. This is different than usual because usually I give tactics. But the beauty of clarity is this. When you get clear, then you can focus on getting clearer. What do I mean by that? Okay, when we got clear that we wanted to have the most successful podcast, the most successful holistic self-improvement podcast, we want to talk about health, wealth, life, and love. We don't want to just talk about business. We don't want to just talk about relationships. We don't want to just talk about fitness. We want to talk about everything. We want to help you level up holistically everywhere. That changed everything. Our content is completely different. The opportunities we'll say yes to, completely different. The opportunities we'll say no to, completely different. Then it becomes, okay, what is the 1% improvement there? When you get clear, and Alan, you might be able to speak to this better because of the, the numbers aspect of it, but when you get clear on something, every time you get a little bit clearer, it's like a giant percentage, even though it seems super small. Because you're really... So think of the um, magnifying glass. The beginning of your journey, it's just, it's kind of a wide beam of light. And as you hone that clarity and you hone it and you hone it and you hone it, it gets very small, like the size of a, the top of a pin maybe, but it's powerful because it's super focused. It's, it's super, super, it's hot. super it gets focused. Really hot. Yeah. Very hot. You can burn a bunch of shit with it. <laughs> I used to do it. And I was a little no, pyro. Yeah. I was a little pyro. I used to light leaves on fire in my driveway. For but, sure, I did too. But that's the the beauty is the more clear you get, the stronger and focused and more focused that <laughs> took me that back gets. to my childhood. <laughs> no, no, it's good. I don't think I ever I don't think I ever burnt ants because I wasn't I wasn't into animal cruelty, but I'm sure there's people out there that have. But <laughs> that's what I was telling this person was when you figure out what you want, and I told Alan I wanted this to be part of my point. If you're out there right now and you're like, I know exactly what I want. I just don't know how to get it. I want you to understand that you're a lot further than you think you are probably because now you just have to figure out what works, what doesn't. I talked to a podcaster the other day. This person's a multimillionaire, very successful. They have products on Amazon, like super successful. And he was like, so how do I grow my show? And I was like, honestly, there's like five things. Just like these really, these just five things. You just have to do them really well and you have to figure out how to do them better every day. And I was like, consistently post on social media. You don't do that. Get on other shows. Like you're saying no to shows. Like get on other shows. Just keep doing that. Just keep keep doing that. Right. Uh, you have to get wildly specific on what you're talking about. Niche, 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 niche. Good guests. 
And then the last one was build relationships. Those, just do those. That's it. Like, that's all you have to do. There's a bunch of other things you could do, sure. But like, we have just, an 18 point podcast yes. assessment that and does if you go want deeper. It, and if, if you, you want, want it, let please, us know. Yeah, please reach, reach out. out. But email us, DM us, wherever. Yeah. Yeah. Send a, a homing pigeon, whatever. But those um, are the five most important. And until five, you're doing those five, don't right. focus on the other ones. Right. And it's yeah. one of those things of, okay, cool. I want to be a successful podcaster. Do these five things. And you know what? The Forever. next the next level of clarity is how do I get on better shows? Right. How do I get to know my audience better? How do I produce better content? One of the reasons that we were able to grow like we did is because I was super focused on that. I've always been focused on, remember, I was like creating teaser clips. Oh, yeah. When listeners <sighs> are down, Kevin does freak out, by the way. I, I do freak out, for sure. <laughs> yeah, so like, thank you so very much. Our <laughs> listeners have been the highest I've ever been, so I'm grateful for that. Yeah. But if you want Kevin to have a mid midlife crisis, <laughs> a second midlife crisis, just stop listening. Please, please don't. <laughs> please don't. Please don't. I'll lose my mind. But for me, it was it was looking at what are the successful people doing? What are, what are the Lewis Howes, the Brendans, the Aubrey Marcuses. I remember showing you like, dude, look at this teaser clip Aubrey Marcus has. Yeah. Like we have to find a way to do what they're doing. Now we have really good content. It's it's only because I was clear enough to see the next level of clarity. So I just want I just want you to understand that like it's that first layer of the onion. I'm clear enough to see the next door. How do I get that door open? Then there's a door behind that, but you only get to see that door when you're clear enough to to get through the next one. So it's just, it's kind of, it's kind of that never ending process. Hey everybody, this is Matt Kramer coming at you from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Kevin, Alan, and the rest of the NLU team. Um, I have come across them in the last year and honestly can say of all the places and people that I get information from for self-improvement, for operating at peak performance, these guys know how to bring it. Um, and their team knows how to bring it too. Uh, all the content they put out, whether it's a podcast, a book club, um, a quick hit video, um, their coaching, any of it is just next level, honestly. Um, no pun intended, it, it is next level. Uh, they drop a lot of knowledge bombs no matter what you're doing and being part of the group coaching has allowed me to really harness the knowledge that they bring to the table. Um, these guys definitely walk the walk and don't just talk the talk, which is <clears throat> the best thing about these guys. Um, you really feel like you get that personalized experience and they know how to bring it. Uh, I was on a podcast recently and and after the interview, uh, Kevin and I are very blessed at this point to have done podcasting for so long that at, at the end of the interview, usually genuinely, usually they're very blown away. Like, holy crap, that was the best interview I've ever had. And I've gotten that a lot genuinely. And, and it's awesome. And I love it every time. So I appreciate it. That's not why I'm saying it though. They say like, I don't know this, this last interview I was on, I was on four last week. And one of them was like, I don't understand. Like, like, how do you know so much at 32? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, how do you know so much? And I've gotten that question a lot in my life. And by the way, that should have been a clue for me mm. of like what I am or who I am or, you know, my passion. And I, I just basically said, I, I just contemplate life every single day. I mean, Kev, like you can attest to this, like, and I'm saying this not because it's about me. I want the listeners to really understand this. Um, Kev, how many times have you and I talked about trivial things? Very, 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 very rarely. Okay, so when you're around me, what do we normally talk about? It's almost always improvement. It's gro growth. Life. Life. How to get better, how to understand things at a deeper level. Like, honestly, early on, like, to an annoying point. Genuinely. Yeah. Like, no, it was no, a talk lot. about that. I appreciate it. Because, dude, <laughs> seriously... Like it was annoying and it was a lot. I really, yeah, yeah. it's okay to go there. I, I it, it, Let's put it this way. I, I would never want to invite Alan over to watch UFC because we wouldn't be talking about UFC. We'd be talking about the universe and we'd be talking about business and we'd be talking about whatever we'd be talking about. I think that, I think that the point of Alan being in the room is not pleasure. It's growth. That's the best way to put it is like, Okay, cool. This is this will be a good analogy or a good a good story, a good lesson. When we were in Florida a couple of weeks ago, if you listen to the episodes, you know Alan and I went to an event with Emilia and Bianca, and it wasn't our cup of tea. We literally went to Starbucks to talk business 
and like deeper understanding of Alan's midlife crisis that he was having. Yeah. We went back to the Airbnb and then discussed what we were going to do for that uh, the, the live podcast we had that night. And we had a group, group, group <laughs> coaching call. Couldn't talk there. Was I know that was, that was really funny. The, the group coaching call. Yeah. We were also talking about like where we fit in the world. This was all after we decided not to go to the event, and we didn't go to the beach. And even when we did go to the beach, you and I walked like a mile down the beach, and we were talking about getting into corporate businesses. Yeah. So even when it seems like we're taking time off, it's not time off. It's just time away, <laughs> but it's still talking about the same thing. It's fascinating. And I, I, the point that I wanted to make, I appreciate that. Of course. Um, just bringing that to light, because I, I think now I'm learning that that isn't normal. And like Emilia and I are doing that always. There's yeah. never a time where that's not happening. Almost never. Um, very, very rarely do we. But like we were watching Gladiator the other night and we were talking about Roman times and how she's been to the Colosseum and, and culture and history and Marcus Aurelius and, and the book Meditations by Marcus Aurelius and Roman philosophers and Lucius Seneca, right? We're not, we're not just watching Gladiator, mm. right? We're, we're contemplating the history of Gladiator and how human leadership, the way, the way, you know, Joaquin Phoenix's character is a terrible, horrible leader, arrogant, vice, just fear-based manipulator, and how Gladiator's character is like an unbelievable, virtuous leader, and, and why that is, and he's got humility and all that. So the point I'm making for the listeners is this. Okay, that's how I know so much is just contemplation. That's what we do on this episode, on this podcast. We contemplate constantly. And luckily, Kevin loves that. Um, and that's why we've gotten along so well is that those deep conversations. And I think that that's probably a common thread. There's two common threads we've noticed of every single listener. We all struggle with self-worth, at least to some extent. Mm. Um, and that, Emilia, helped us understand. And that the started sec- with with us. Alan and oh, I both for struggled sure. with that. So it obviously struggle you would, with that for me. Struggle. Definitely yeah, still, struggle. Still, with I that. still do too. And you, you attract what you are. So, right. Exactly. And then the second one is deep conversations. Mm. Like, you know, people who listen to this show want to talk and contemplate life, health, love, wealth, like how to get to the next level. And that's why you contemplate. But to, to, I digress. Clarity. Kevin and I have clarity about who we are, what our purpose is you know, the vehicle at which we're going to get to that, that purpose. We have clear long-term goals, mid-range goals, short-term goals. We have clear approaches and paradigms on how to get there. We have clarity regarding our core values, our core aspirations, and our core beliefs. We're not at 100% though. And I want to make this clear. I wrote this down too. We're never at 100% clarity. There's no such thing. That's like saying Michael Jordan's done getting better at basketball. There, there, he always could have gotten a, a percentage better, uh, except for age and whatever it's sports. So it's a different thing, but like Kevin and I are more clear than we've ever been, but we're not like all knowing, not even close. And so we're going to be clearer at 34 than we are at 32. You know, we're clearer at 32 than we were at 30. And so I think for the listeners, like you don't need to go from zero clarity to 100% clarity. There's no such thing. The goal is to get a little bit clearer every single day through contemplation through deeper understanding, through good books, great resources, great podcasts. If you're listening to this show, your soul is called to get more clarity. You want to have dreams and goals, even if you don't know it. You want to have more direction in your life. Fulfillment is the soul's recognition of alignment with its highest self. It's alignment. Alignment is direction. What does alignment mean? Aligned with your goals. Aligned your past, who you used to be your present, who you are now, and your future, who you aspire to be, they have to be in alignment. And the only way for them to be in alignment is predicated on the fact that you actually understand what those things are and and, and, and are contemplating them and recontemplating them and mastering them and remastering them. And so um, I had kind of set the intention to help people get over this sort of like, I have clarity or I don't have clarity. Mm. It's, it's like, okay, I have more clarity than I used to, but not as much clarity as I'm going to have tomorrow because I'm going to ask these difficult questions and really take the time to answer them. And I think the the last piece, the last um, understanding that I'll give, and I used this on a call the other day with somebody, it's almost like you have to have enough clarity to get into the game. That's like that's kind of it because – Jesus. If, yeah, that was loudest, quite loud. loudest alarm of all time. If if you told me, this is why for me, when I do the posts about if you told me we'd be 700 and whatever, a multi six figure business, we have an app that's being produced, <laughs> like book club, speeches, group coaching, NLPS, whatever. I would never believe you 
because that's not, I didn't have that level of clarity. I had the level of clarity that I want a podcast for a living. That was it. Like that was it. Layer one. Layer one. <laughs> worry about layer one. Worry yeah. about worry about layer one. Because unless you're a visionary and you have visionary thinking like Alan does, you might not be able to see the pot at the end of the rainbow. You just might be able to see the first bit of the rainbow, and that's okay. That's okay. I think you should just imagine if tomorrow you were waking up. And again, this might not land for everybody. This is what works for me, and this is work for clients. If tomorrow you were waking up and you could live any life you wanted, what would that look like? Where would you wake up? Who would you wake up next to? What would you be doing? You can't just sit around all day and do nothing. You have to you have to do something productive. Serve whatever, the world in some way. Whatever yeah. that means to you. Again, this this is um this is a good a good little thing. There is literally a show on YouTube called what is it hot things or i don't oh, know oh yeah yeah the 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 thing where the guy has celebrities on and they eat hot wings and he interviews them about their life like i doubt he just came up with that one day and he's like i'm going to have an unreasonably successful youtube channel where i get paid and sponsored to sit down and talk to people while we eat hot wings <laughs> i bet you it was probably like i want to have a youtube channel where i talk to people that's probably where it started. That's probably where it started. Joe Rogan wanted to have interesting conversations with interesting people because he's curious. He had no idea it was going to look like it does now. I know he didn't. Yeah. I, I know he didn't. It's hard for me to hear you say that because I, I know. so reverse engineering. I know. But yeah. I know most most people yeah. most people aren't. So I think I think you have to everybody expects to have the understanding of what the view from the top of the mountain looks like. You're not going to most likely, unless you're a very rare case like Alan. You need to get to the first summit, and then you got to see, and then the second, third, fourth. So for me, I don't know what it's like. Uh, I don't know what it's like, but I've I've got an impression and a feeling, and I've and I know for a fact we'll get there. Yeah, that's. But I don't know what it's like. That's where my lessons come. Is once we get there, and it's a little different than what I thought. Then I freak out. I talk to Kevin about it. (laughs) You know, dude, that's what it's happening. Every time we get to a new level, I'm having another mini like, oh, that's different yeah. than I expected. So what was I missing? What am I missing? Yeah. Um, anyways, that's a whole nother thing, but that's a smaller percentage. I do agree. You gotta you gotta know what that first layer is and then unlock the next layer and unlock the next level. The the, the video game analogy is really cool for next level you. Like there's there's levels, you know. Yeah. Level one is different than level two and different than level three, different than level four. And if you don't get if you don't learn how to you know, shoot the gun right on level one, you're not going to be able to kill the boss on level four. And I think that's critical for this as well. I concur with you. Next level nation. If you're a podcaster and that's your thing, maybe, maybe in this moment you're saying, you know what? I'm clear that I want to have a podcast that I can do for a living. Awesome. That is an amazing level of clarity that most people don't ever have. Please reach out. I would love to be the one who helps you grow your show, scale your show, and then monetize your show. That is obviously a super important part of any business. And I always tell my clients, you have to treat your podcast like a business because the reason most don't succeed is because people take them lightly. They don't take them very serious. So all my info is in the show notes. Please reach out. Also, group coaching, the fifth round is starting January 4th. January 4th, 2022. 2022, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are only taking 10 people. I believe we already have two signed up. So make sure if you want in on that, you do it quickly because that will sell out. The reason we're opening it up earlier is because we know that there's demand for it. So we want to make sure that people have enough time to do their thing. Also, download the PDF in the show notes and ask yourself these tough questions. I'm going to send them to our digital asset creator, Christina. She's amazing. Yes, yes. She's going to brand it up nice. And it's a downloadable PDF. It's completely free. Just download that. Um, it'll get emailed to you directly. And ask these tough questions and contemplate. And I did want to... I, yeah, I'm just going to do it if that's cool. I, I wanted to read just something that is a good ah, example it's like of a, clarity. It's like a throwback. Remember you used to read... I used uh, to read the dramatic readings. Yeah, yeah, dramatic readings. 
All right. So, um, and I want the listeners to hold me to this too. So, so I'm writing a book right now. I'm doing three paragraphs a day. One of my clients inspired me. So I want to shout out one of my clients. Her name is Laura. She's writing three paragraphs a day and she's done it every day for 48 days. And every single time I would see, she, she basically says, sends it to me, her three paragraphs every day. I've seen it in your um, WhatsApp when you, yeah. when you screen share. <laughs> and she's inspired me. So Laura, shout out to you if you're listening. Thank you for inspiring me because I talk a lot and I think a lot about my books and I'm going to write about a dozen of them. But again, you gotta, you can't just look at the top of the mountain. You have to take that next step. And so for me, I've been writing three paragraphs a day. Um, and, and so this is the first three paragraphs of my book. And again, this is a first draft, but this is good for the listeners for two reasons. One, um, it's going to help you understand how much clarity I have, not only on who I am at this point, but who I want to read this book. And when you get to a place, and I did not ha always have clarity, I would argue that like in the first parts of my life, I had very little clarity and I was kind of all over the place. And it wasn't until after 26 that I really got it. So again, nothing against you if you're out there and you feel that way. But this is a good example of what clarity looks like. Dear reader, that's the opening. Opening chapter. Welcome to Optimizing for Fulfillment. Right up front, I want to be honest and explicit with you about what this book is and perhaps more importantly, what it is not. This book is designed to help you improve your life. It is not for entertainment. This book is for people who want to maximize their potential. It is not for those who don't. This book is practical, actionable, and scientific. It is not silly, playful, or even fun, honestly. This is a serious book for serious people who intend to make a serious difference in the world. It is not for anyone who doesn't. As you can tell from my opening, I am not one to waste time. I don't intend to waste your time or mine. In fact, that opening is designed to wean out the faint-hearted who aren't committed to real change. If that last paragraph excited you, excellent. This book is for you. If it didn't, then perhaps it is not, and that's okay. So as you can see from that, I'm very, very clear on who I am, what the purpose of this book is, and who I want to read it. And I think that when you get that level of clarity, you're going to end up being way more consistent. And when you're way more consistent, you're going to get so much momentum and so much fulfillment. And that's what Kevin and I want for each and every one of you. That is true. So you got a sneak peek. When's the when's the book going to be written in full? Do we know? Mm -mm. Three paragraphs a day till forever. until I know it's complete. Perfect. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll get. My you goal will be to launch a book in 2022. I for sure, for sure. No excuses. I have to publish a book in 2022. I know that. Okay. Hold me to that. I will try my best. You are stubborn as yeah. a mule. <laughs> yeah, as a mule. <laughs> Mules are apparently very stubborn. I don't know That's where they what get that right. They, but, got, a, they got a bad word. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know why, you know, who made that up about them, but it is what it is. It is Next it is. Level Nation, as always, we love you. We appreciate you. So tomorrow for Strategy Saturday, episode number 768, how to make more effective decisions is what Alan and I will be talking about. And there will be tangible takeaways for you and... Remember, Saturday, Strategy Saturdays are quicker episodes. This is the longer one. We try to just deliver pure value on Saturday so you can get on with your weekend and go do your thing, whatever that is, whatever you want to do on the weekend. As always, we love you. We appreciate you. We're grateful for each and every one of you. We couldn't do this without you. And we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Talk to you soon. Bye.